Hey everyone, I wanted to introduce to you a calculator for helping calculate the maximum loan amount for the Payroll Protection Program uh, COVID relief uh, effort provided by Congress. Um, that will be launching today and uh, bankers should be able to be start taking applications sometime today uh, for this. And this is intended to provide relief to you as a, a business owner to help you pay your payroll for the next uh, two, two and a half months. So. Uh, what they're asking for is they want to know what your average uh, payroll was for uh, monthly payroll was for 2019 and this uh, then they will go ahead and give you 2.5 times that amount to spend on things 75% uh, of that loan is supposed to go to payroll and you can use the other 25% for um, rent mortgage interest and utilities so let's go ahead and figure out how to use the tool so we can uh, come up with the amount that goes on the application for the uh, SBA. Um, you can go ahead and fill this this information out here. This information is also included on the SBA loan application. Um, so if you if you want to skip it, you can and just put that directly onto the application. Um, the inputs here, we're going to figure out um, if your company qualifies by being under 500 employees. There will be certain exceptions uh, to that, depending on your industry. Some um, companies can be over that and still qualify as a small business, but I think the exceptions are few on that. But go ahead and, and research that for yourself. Um, Anyway, you can put in your number of employees there. This number is going to be important because they want to know that also on the application. What they're going to do is they're going to look at um, the employees that you started with at, at the beginning of the program and what you ended with on June 30th. And um, the, the cool thing about this loan that they're offering is that if you um, use this money to pay payroll costs, the, you know, on the on the day that you receive the money, they're going to start an eight-week timer, um, and it, during that eight week weeks, if you spend the money on payroll costs and utilities, and loan and, and mortgage interest, um, then it's completely forgivable. So you do not have to pay that back. Um, however, if you are to lay off employees and have a, a lower headcount of employees after uh, at the June 30 mark, they're going to. Um, not forgive a certain percent of that. So I'll, I'll show you that that calculation down below. Um, so the affiliation test, you need to determine whether any owner owns more than 20% and list the owners on, on the application if they do. Um, does the company have venture capital, private equity groups that own greater than 20%? So this this question's a little bit fuzzy right now. They're trying to figure out if there's a if there's a way around doing this. But the, the question that's actually asked on the application is this. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? If yes, list all such businesses and describe the relationship on a separate sheet identified as addendum A. So I've also pr provided this sheet here where you can fill this out. Um, you can list the owners and the um, ownership they might have in other companies and just list percents here. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what your bank is going to want, but at least it's a good starting point for gathering that uh, information. They may want more information on the other companies here. Um, so go ahead and fill that section out here. And then we're going to look here as well. If you've taken any money from the EIDL loan at the time of, time of application for the, the payroll protection plan loan, uh, then go ahead and list this here. And what they're going to do is they'll roll that money uh, into the um, PPP loan. Um, so if you were to receive the $10,000 that they're uh, going to give you uh, at the time the bank received your application for the EIDL loan, uh, before you get the PPP loan, they want to know this amount here and it will become part of your forgivable amount of the PPP loan. Um, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and figure out now how to calculate our payroll costs. And this is the big the big section here. The What we want to do is um, they, they've, they're giving you an allowance for anybody that... Um, is under a hundred thousand, so that can be part of your loan. A uh, hundred thousand annualized payroll in 2019. So what's going to happen is anybody that earns over a hundred thousand needs to be adjusted down to a hundred thousand. So that's what this sheet will do. So you could list um, all your employees here, 
and their wages. So you can see that it takes them down to 100,000. And then if you do one under, it's going to um, just give them that amount. So go ahead and, and fill that out. When you're done, let me scroll all the way to the bottom here. When you're done, this amount should tie to your line three of your 940. Um, there's an exception if you look at your 941s. Your 941s um, will show an amount on line two that is um, pre anything deducted pre tax is not included on line two. So if you're looking at your four 941s, uh, make sure to add back anything that was deducted pre tax, like 401k. Um, <clears throat> and then this amount over here is calculating um, what it is at the 100,000 cap. And so this, this is the amount they're actually looking for. So go ahead and fill that out for your employees so that it reduces anybody down that earns over, oh, it's a little high, 100,000 um, to 100,000. So the um, the things to, to take note of note here, what payroll costs include salary, wage, commission, similar compensation, cash tips, payment for vacation, sick leave, allowance for dismissal or separation, um, and then any state or, or local tax, tax assessed on compensation of employees. Now, what it doesn't include is any taxes imposed for chapters 21, the payroll tax is 22, railroad 24, income taxes withheld on wages. Um, it does not include compensation for employees who princ whose principal residence is outside the United States. So uh, just take them off of this li list if they're uh, not living within the United States. And a qualified sick or family leave wage for which a credit is allowed under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. So if you've got any, if you've taken any credit for that, um, that this moment mostly applies to 2020, obviously. I mean, it will apply to 2020. So any, if you're doing 2019, you shouldn't have it to worry about any of that. Um, now we're going to go look at the uh, benefits tab, the other benefits that you can include uh, in addition to the this number here. Um, you can include your health, your employer portion of health insurance premiums. So that would be this line here. Um, you can go ahead if you only if you have a stack of health insurance bills and you know what the bill amounts are and you know what the employees paid, you can reduce this with a negative number to come up with a net uh, amount that the employer paid for health insurance, the employer 401k match, um, and then other employer related items, uh, which can include the state or local tax assessed on the compensation of employees. Uh, for example, uh, SUDA, uh, state unemployment, can also be included here. Uh, all of these things will, I'm gonna just put in some numbers here so we have something to look at on the other page. So let's say we've got a 50,000 and then this is just for the year, 50,000 and 20,000 was paid by employees. So 30,000 was paid by the employer. Um, let's say that we had uh, 3,000 in state unemployment tax for the year. You could do it this way too. If you don't want to do it by month, just stick in an annualized number in one of these columns and it will just calculate there. So let's go over to the summary sheet and see how this turns out. So uh, let's put in our employees here. So we decided we had three. Um, the salary wager commission or similar compensation was 365. We reduced that by the 105,000. Um, so the 365 was the original number that we came up with down here at the bottom. And then the reduction there. So you can see how that works. And then we are adding into that what the employer paid for health insurance. Any of these other things would also show up here. You could also include the, these other things in this number. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then any retirement benefit, 401k there. So there, there's a state and local tax that totals all of those up there and brings it down to here. Here's your total 2019 payroll cost. We're going to divide that uh, by 12 to come up with our, uh, our average monthly. We're going to multiply that by 2.5 to come up with our maximum loan amount on that. Uh, these numbers here, so this number here and this number here would go on your, your application for the SBA. 
Um, this area here is optional, not necessary for the application anywhere, but this is kind of a, an FYI. How am I going to spend the money, that the, the loan money, to see how, and this will show me how much will be forgiven of that. So if I were to put an estimated payroll for eight weeks, let's say I'm, I'm planning on paying 50000 of that, $61,000, um, just to go towards payroll. Uh, I've got another 2,000 insurance premiums. Over here, you can see the loan amount decreasing with the balances there. So if that ever gets negative, you've spent it. So don't you don't need to worry about continuing on there. Uh, estimated 401k match. Let's say there's none on that. The mortgage rent, mortgage um, interest and rent for eight weeks. Let's say that's going to be 3,000. What they're saying now is these two items here, the utilities and rent, cannot be more than 25% of your total loan amount. Um, if it is, it just won't be forgiven. So when they're looking at the forgiveness calculations, these two cannot be more than 25% of the total loan amount. Um, not a big deal if it's not forgiven, by the way, because the interest rate, uh, it just turns into a loan, a two-year loan, um, six months before they start collecting on that loan, and the interest rate is 1% at the time. As of now, they've changed that like three times, but it's it's 1% as of now. So here's your utilities. So you say, that's how I spent it. Now, if I didn't spend it all on these items, then they're gonna ask, they're gonna say, okay, this part becomes a loan. Um, I stayed below 7% on of my loan amount, and the rest of it becomes a loan right there, um, which is due in two years, or yes, two years, sorry. Um, <clears throat> if this were to go above, let's say that I spent 10000 on rent, let's reduce one of these down here, 45 on payroll, 10000 on rent, that seems to be higher, say 20000 20,000 and let's reduce our payroll down to 30,000. So let's say that's how I spent my money. They're going to say, not only is this part forgivable, uh, I mean, the, not only is this part not forgivable, this will turn into a loan because you didn't spend it on these qualified yeah. things. Um, also, the this part was above 25 percent so that's how we come up with this 13,000 is, is made up of this amount remaining that we didn't spend on the qualified items plus the anything of anything of this amount that is over 25 percent uh, if you have any questions uh, please feel free to reach out we'll post some links in the uh, comments so that you can reach us and we'll we're happy to help thank you